For centuries, people have been drawn to the entertainment of travelling shows that showcased the differences between the masses and the unusual. The world of the sideshow can be an interesting one, and today's tale certainly falls into that category, culminating in a grisly murder. In today's episode of Unusual as Usual, we're uncovering the gripping tale of the Lobster Boy, aka Grady Styles Jr. <laughs> Grady Franklin Stiles Jr. was born in Pittsburgh on the 18th of July 1937. Like his father before him, he was born with a birth defect called exrodactyly, a condition commonly known as lobster claw syndrome. It's a rare congenital deformity of the hand where the middle digit is missing and the hand is cleft where the metacarpal of the finger should be. This split often affects both fingers and toes and twists them into claw-like appendages, although cases do range in severity and it can even skip a generation. In the Stiles family, the condition started to display in 1805. Grady Stiles Jr. was the sixth person to be affected. Following in his father's claw-like footsteps, Stiles joined the circus at the tender age of seven. His condition, like his father's, was severe and he was unable to walk. He learned to use his hands and arms to get around and, as a result, developed incredible upper body strength. He married twice and had four children. Two of those, a girl, Cathy, and a boy, Grady Styles III, were also born with exrodactyly. Although the siblings were from different mothers, they sometimes toured together, exhibiting themselves as the lobster family, making a living off their deformity by touring with travelling carnival sideshows. The family grew up rather well off because of it, reportedly earning anywhere from $50,000 to $80,000 per season. By all accounts, Styles had always been a bit of a hothead, prone to losing his temper and throwing tantrums at a moment's notice, to the point where many of the other sideshow performers outright avoided him. The exception being Harold Huge, the sideshow fat man, who became a relatively close friend of his. Things began to escalate quickly for Styles when he became fond of hitting the bottle. He was not a happy drunk, with his family taking most of the brunt of his alcohol fueled outbursts. He often used his frightening strength to beat his wife and children. Styles was a rarity in the freak show world. By many accounts, he was every bit the monster he appeared to be. When his oldest daughter fell in love and became engaged with a young carnival worker, Styles didn't approve of her choice. Perhaps the young man stuck up for her. Perhaps he confronted Styles. Either way, Styles gave the phrase shotgun wedding a very literal meaning. When he grabbed his 12 gauge shotgun and proceeded to shoot the would-be son-in-law in cold blood the day before their wedding. The trial was a media circus. In court, Styles openly confessed to his crime and showed very little remorse. However, he didn't serve any jail time for the murder due to a technicality. He used his condition to his advantage. He suffered from chronic liver disease due to his excessive drinking and a very bad case of emphysema from smoking up to 60 cigarettes a day. His lawyers argued that since the prison system was not equipped to deal with his disability, confining him to such an institution would constitute a cruel and unusual punishment. Styles was let off on 15 years probation and was free to return home to continue his reign of terror. After escaping prison time, he felt invincible. When he resumed beating his family, one of his favorite taunts was I've killed before and got away with it. I can do it again. Eventually, the family had enough. On the evening of the 29th of November, 1992, Styles was in his living room, planted in front of the TV like any other night. But this time, he wasn't alone. The barrel of a 32 Colt automatic was put to the back of his head and three bullets were fired at point blank range. The hitman 
was 19-year-old sideshow performer Chris Wyant, a neighbor to the Styles family. He was paid $1,500 in cash by Styles' wife, Maria, and her stepson, Harry, to put an end to Styles' reign of terror. Styles was so hated in his community that at his funeral, no one was willing to be his pallbearer. Wyant was convicted of second degree murder and sentenced to 27 years in jail. Harry was considered the mastermind behind the plot. He was convicted of first degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. Maria was convicted of conspiracy to commit murder and was sentenced to 12 years in prison. In her defense, Maria stated, my husband was going to kill my family. I believe that from the bottom of my heart. I'm sorry this happened, but my family is safe now. Grady Styles Jr. was buried with Grady Styles Sr. in the showman's section of the Sunset Memory Garden Cemetery in Florida. And that was the end of that. Or was it? Grady Styles III said his father's murder wasn't exactly how it was reported in court. He went on to say, what actually happened was my mother and my father had gotten in another fight, as usual, and my mother had made the comment that something needed to be done. My brother had overheard and went to our neighbor who told him something had to be done. My brother thought that meant scaring him or beating my dad to make him realize he was going to lose his family. A little while later, my dad was shot. The true details of the case we may never know, but I'm sure you'll agree, it continues to remain one of the most bizarre and outlandish murder cases that there is. Although not the first lobster boy, Grady Styles Jr. was certainly the most infamous. He's been cemented in pop culture and his likeness has been used in numerous films, TV shows, books and music over the years, such as appearing on cover artwork for Silverchair's album, Freak Show and portrayed in the song called The Ballad of Lobster Boy by John Strong. A Lobster Boy character going by the name of Ed McGrady appears in issue 897 of the Deadpool comic books as the fictional mayor of Gibsonton. In this issue, Deadpool is hired to assassinate Ed McGrady by shooting him in the head for being cruel to other freak show performers. And in more recent times, American Horror Story Freak Show has a Lobster Boy character called Jimmy Darling, who winds up in prison after being framed for murder. He eventually decides to have his hands amputated so they can be sold to pay for his defense lawyer. And there we have it, the gripping tale of the Lobster Boy, Grady Styles Jr. Styles seems to have got himself into a bit of a pinch but I guess we'll never know what really happened. How do you think his murder went down? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. That's all we've got time for today, but I'll see you all next week. And remember, stay unusual as usual. If you've enjoyed this video, you might like this one too. If you want to see more anatomical oddities, you can check out the full playlist by clicking here. Don't forget to ring that bell to make sure you don't miss out on next week's video. And if you have any ideas on what the next episode should be about, make sure you add it to the comment section below.